do some shears heel I don't see how you share now. Okay, that's to a page. How do you share? How do you share the groups now? You changed it? Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to share to the groups um, that I need to get it into, but I don't see how I'm um, to do it anymore. Okay, that's not what I was trying to do. Okay, um, for those of y'all in the reading groups, if you can share this to your group, um, if you come on, please do so. I have no idea how to do it anymore, like they made some changes. Okay, so um, let some folks get up in here. I'm going to be talking about um, explaining how I do distance healing because a lot of people want to know how do you do this from a distance? How can you um, do this? Since Bay wants to be in your video. Are you trying to come on live with me is, or is that was that an accident? What's going on, Karen? So, of course, while um, everybody come on, I'm going to get my sage lit. Got my Paolo and my dragon's blood here. Says uh, somebody wants to come on with you. Let's see if that's what she's trying. Okay, maybe it was an accident. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me? Before I get started, can everybody hear me? Oh, yes. Oh, shoot. I meant to call you. I meant to call you. I'm so sorry. Oh, you was trying to share it. Okay, cool. All right, good. Y'all can hear me. All right, let me get this sage lit real quick, and then I'm going to get into this. So I can explain again how distance healing is done and um, talk about a little bit about people being skeptic, which is understood. It's fair to have that feeling. And um, and then trusting the process after the healing is done. Kind of late too. I'm getting on here, um, so I know some folks won't be able to catch this to the morning, especially on the East Coast. What's going on, my man? Block, yeah, Block Panther, full in effect here. Okay, so let's let's get into this. So when we do distance healing, um, I've done distance healing people all over the world, from Australia, the UK, South Africa, other parts of Africa, all across the United States and Canada. Those are the main uh, places that I do uh, distance healings from. So what exactly is distance healing? So distance healing is when you have a person in another location separate from yourself and you're able to heal, do healings or any type of spiritual work on them uh, as if they was right in front of you. So like I made a post yesterday uh, or maybe the day before yesterday showing me doing a Reiki session on someone uh, in their home and I had my hands and I was moving my hands around different positions. I was um, using my crystal wands, using pendulums, etc. So the difference is we can do the same thing, but we just do it at a distance as if the person was actually right in front of us. And so a lot of people who want to get the service or want to try it, they can be a little skeptic, which is fair, but because um, they're trying to figure out, well, if I'm here in Houston and you're there in San Antonio, how are you going to do this on me from that, that large uh, distance? 
um, especially people like I do in uh, Australia and South Africa, et cetera, in the UK. So one thing to understand when it comes to spiritual healing and doing any type of spiritual work, uh, distance really doesn't exist. Distance is more about the physical, like, you know, like from here to there, you know, that distance, that physical distance. But when it comes to spirituality, there is no distance. One of the um, analogies I like to use is the uh, avatar concept. If you notice when they uh, connected their hair to the tree, then they became connected to one another. It's like that tree was like a network. And that's how the universe works. We're all connected to the universe. And once we connect to the universe, then we're able, we're able to um, connect to each other, no matter where we are. As long as one person or both people are in receive mode to receiving the energy from each other. Um, you ever think about like uh, when someone's doing something else and then you think about them and then when you think about them, all of a sudden they call you or they text you. It's because when you were thinking about them, you were actually sending energy to them and it, it's quick. It's really fast. So no matter where they were, they can receive that you are thinking about them. Um, so that's how this works. Just again, if you're all connected to the same universe, then um, as long as both of us connect, we can connect to each other in real time. Do you heal illnesses? Uh, yes, it depends on the illness. Sometimes I can't cure it, but I can um, definitely degrade the symptoms of the illness. So it really just depends. It's case by case. I, I can't say yes or no. It's case by case. Um, now, how does the connection work? Because when I, when I deal with people, um, you know, I get ready to do work on them. I always say, I'm going to connect to you first. And then when I connect to you, you're going to feel my energy. Then once you feel that energy, um, then, you know, we go from there, right? So let's say this is the person I'm healing and this is me. So when I first say, okay, I'm going to connect to you before we start, what I imagine in my mind is their body, my body becoming one body. That's the first thing I do. Um, and, and then that goes along with protection. So we, we mesh the, the souls together and then we place a protection around both of us so we're protected in the session. Um, when the bodies mesh, what that gives me the ability to do is now my soul being messed with your soul, I can feel everything in your body. So when a person is hurting in a certain place and I say, hey, you got pain here or you got tension there? And they say, yeah, like, how do you know? That's how I know because I actually impart myself into the body of the other person. Now being a medium, this is exactly what I do when I do uh, medium work. So like if someone had a loved one who passed away and then that loved one, they wanted me to connect to that loved one. As soon as I connect to that loved one, the first thing I do is feel how they died or um, whatever type of hurt they had on them or injuries. That's the first thing I feel because now their soul is imparted on me. So I can now feel what happened with them. So I do the same concept when I heal. I connect, take my soul, their soul, mesh into one, and then I allow, allow myself to feel the body, feel the pain, feel whatever it is on them. I allow myself to feel it because it helps guide me. Now I can use my body as a guide, okay? So that's how when I say I'm connecting to you, that's what I'm doing. I'm connecting uh, myself actually to you. In some cases, too, like when I'm doing like, um, like I'm doing a cleansing, like if somebody thinks their home has something in it, I do the same thing. I'll connect to them. And just like the movie Ghost, it's like I sit in their body and then I come out or I go to their home through their body and then I stand up out of their body and then I use my higher self to walk around their home and see what's going on. Gather up any bad stuff. And then when I gather up any uh, bad stuff, I, uh, you know, we throw that away and um, keep on going. Yes, I do um, Reiki on, yes, on emotional damage. Indeed, we call that uh, core cutting, uh, core pulling. Um, so again, connecting, I can see what you see. I can feel what you feel. Sometimes if I'm in a really good space, I can even see what's in, around that person. Like I can say, you know, there's something right here or there's something right there. I'll see that hallway and I'm able to tell them exactly what's going on around them because I'm actually in coming into their home through them. Um, so like, if, like if when I connect, right, if a person has like negative energy on them, I'm able to feel that, like I'll get itchy. If I get itchy, I know that person has negative energy on them. Um, I feel my body get hot when I stood in front of someone before and I knew he was sick. So you're, you're probably an empath, um, probably a physical healer. Uh, so yeah, that's probably why you felt that.
probably felt this infection. So once I connect, I do a scan. And in the scan, from head to toe, you'll like that person usually will feel the energy um, start the head and it'll just kind of slowly work its way down to the feet. And when it does that, it gives me like a, a it gives me, you know, what's wrong. So whatever is, is wrong, it'll highlight on the body, meaning that that person didn't know they had depression. When the scan passes the back of the head and that tension like starts to throb a little bit in the back of the head, then now they feel that it's there. So it's not only bringing it to the surface for me to feel, but it's um, also bringing it to the surface for them to know that something is there as well. Um, we've had somebody who didn't know they had pain in a certain area, nothing was, was even wrong until I did the scan and then it came to the surface. Then we did the healing on it and then it was good. So um, once we do the scan, we check for a chakras, we check for cords that are uh, need to be pulled like depression, anxiety, past trauma, current trauma, stress, anger. Anger is a big one, comes out of the heart chakra and the forehead. Um, we check for um, negative cores coming away from you, like if you're sending negative energy to somebody and if somebody's sending, sending negative energy to you, to your solar plexus, we check for that too. So we, we just pretty much do a full body scan. And then if that's, and, and then if there are some uh, things that, uh, people need to work on specifically and they tell us like, Oh, they tell me, they say, Hey, can you help me with this? Then that helps a lot too. And then I can go ahead and address that as well. Or me and the other healer who I'm working with, we can address that. Now, let me give you some examples of uh, some, of, some of the ways I do healings, especially when I do um, private readings or private healings. So this is, um, this is a body works book. Basically it's like an anatomy book and as you can see, I got it on sale. It was cheap. Got it on sale at Barnes & Noble. And what I do is I use the voodoo doll concept. I think I talked about this before uh, briefly. I use the voodoo doll concept. Just like you can take a voodoo doll and you can inflict pain, you can take a voodoo doll and you can inflict healing. So I use the voodoo doll effect to uh, inflict healing. So let's say somebody is having neck tension, which most people do, especially if they're stressed or depressed. So, so if somebody's having some type of um, neck tension or some type of back pain, I'll go to the uh, part of the book that deals with the spinal or go to the part of the book that deals with the muscle pain. It just depends on how the scan feel. So I'm going to try something with y'all who are participating if you want, if you're open to it. I'm going to do something here and allow you all to feel it so you can feel what, what I'm talking about. Let me find that um, page that I'm looking for. I'm going to do a little exercise, a little live exercise. I never did this before, but it should work. Good night. What can I find all of a sudden? All right, give me a sec. I lost my place where I'm supposed to be going. So what I'm going to do is what I'm talking about is what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do what I call injections to let you feel how the voodoo doll effect works for healing. Okay, 156. And I apologize, I should have had this ready. Okay, here we go. This is the page I was looking for. All right. So let's say somebody's having uh, back pain, right? Let's say you're having sciatica or you're having a uh, lower back muscle tension or muscle tightness like that. To help better guide me, because you can do this in the mind without using anything, but sometimes, because my mind races so fast, I can't slow it down enough to focus. So then I use my tools to kind of help me uh, focus myself. So for everybody who wants to receive this, who's looking, okay, this is what I'm going to do. 
the wand, uh, again, it's all about the mind. It's all about the third eye when it comes to this, because your third eye is what you're working through. And whatever I want to make something, using my imagination, it becomes. So if I say the wand is going to be a syringe and the crystal is going to be a needle, then that's what it becomes. And then I tell myself, okay, this is what I want to put inside the syringe. So when I insert the needle, it will inject the medicine, right? And some people say they can feel the pressure. Some people even see, feel the needle actually going in. I did a healing earlier, and I did three injections on her lower abdomen, and she felt every needle go in into it. Because, again, it's about the imagination. Your mind is really, really strong if you use it. So, so for all of y'all who are on here who wants to receive this, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to set the intentions that, you know, this receipt goes out to everyone watching. So I'm going to place the injection. Okay. On one part of the neck, on four places in the neck. And you can type in when you feel it, what you feel, where you felt it. So again, I'm using a voodoo doll effect. So basically I made this picture your body and then whatever I do on the picture actually happens on you. Okay, when you feel it, when you feel with it, something, go ahead and type below. Let us know what you're feeling, where are you feeling it, and what happens. Now, I did something specific in here to uh, that, that should be an effect on you once it starts working. So when that happens, also, if you can let me know that as well. Okay. And I'll wait for some comments to pop up, see what people say. I know that's a delay in comments. So right side of your neck. Yes. So the first one, so the first one I injected was on the right side of the neck at the top, like right at the base of the head at the top of the neck is where the, where the first one went in. So yes, that is exactly right. And then I went to the left side and did the same thing. Right foot. I'm not even on. <laughs> What's going on, bro? Felt it on your right arm. So remember, not only are these muscles connected to each other, they're also um, uh, the nerves. So even though you might feel it like down the arm, as the neck starts to relax, then you may start to feel the, the residual, the not residual, the referred um, effect. Yep, it's relaxing your neck, uh, Kennedy. Um, that's exactly what I put in here. I put in here so it can relax the muscles. It can relax, reduce inflammation, um, pain, tension. I put all of that in what I call a cocktail. And when I use this on uh, people, um, then, you know, they can feel the effect. How y'all feeling in the foot though? I'm not sure about that. Make sure y'all not doing that yourself. Okay. That's exactly what it's doing. It's relaxing your neck, uh, the neck muscles, the neck tension. So, if I have a volunteer, I can do um, I can do a live, you know, something for them if somebody wants to volunteer. And wants to come on camera and uh, I can we can show everybody how this works. Somebody I don't I have no idea what's wrong with you. Um, you just tell me where the pain is and we'll do it live right now. Okay, so she's getting an um, x-ray on her neck. So I hope you felt that then, because you probably could use that. Cooling effect on your neck, yes. So sometimes when the healing energy goes in, it can be cool or it can be tingly. It can be a little bit of both. Um, all right, come on. Let's go, Let's go, uh, Latrice. Come on, camera. Oh, you know what, Latrice, let, let Laundra go, because... I, you know, I've done a million healers on you. Let, um, 
Okay, well, I guess we do got somebody already coming. All right, about to do this live. I'm gonna show y'all how this works. Sensation. Hey, how you doing? Let me put my headphones on. Hello, how are you? You doing all right? Um, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, just, so um, you've been I watching? Suffer. Yes. Okay. I have. I also follow you too. That's why oh. I was like, I'm the one that was feeling heat in my foot. Yeah, that's strange. Too. I, yeah. Now, you know, the <laughs> brain, you know, is right there, uh, right above it. So depending on the nerves that's just running down, again, you know, if that neck is so tight, it squeezes on the nerves. As it releases, then those nerves get free as well, which is probably why you're feeling it all the way down there. So, um, okay. so what I'm going to do. If it's okay with you, since we're, you know, we're doing this for live for others to see, I want to um, okay. connect to you so you can explain how that feels, right? Like I'll okay. explain the connection mm -hmm. process and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay. Yep. So can you take a deep breath for me? Yep. I'm going to take one, two. Now, a lot of times when I do um, energy work, especially through video, we get a lot of uh, we get a lot of static because that energy is like it's amplified, okay. So that's normal to hear the static, okay. Uh, when I'm working, okay, okay. So now I'm going to connect to her. I'm going to place a protection around both of us, and you hear the static. That's that energy starting to transmit back and forth. You let me know when you feel that energy connected. I do. Okay. And how do you, can you explain what do you feel so others um, kind of know? It's like a light magnified, um, like a pairing. Like a pairing, right. Uh, it's a pairing. Yeah. Like you take, uh, as if a magnet is pairing to metal. Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. And some people feel a heaviness. Some people feel a heaviness on them. Um, you know, but that's pretty much what it should feel like. What am I doing? All right, so I'm doing a healing session live so others can see how distance healing works. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do a scan from head to toe. Okay. And then when it's done, I want you to just explain if you can explain to everyone what that felt like. Okay. 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 So this time we're going to scan. Here from head to toe. And if y'all notice, as soon as I start the scan, the static picked up even more. That's the energy, the energy moving back and forth. Are you feeling that scan go down? Mm -hmm. Can you explain to them what it feels like, what you're feeling? There's an energy that slowly, you can feel it slowly going down. All the way, um, almost like battery charging, as if you come towards static. Yeah. You yeah. know, like your hair wants to stand up, but my hair is not standing up. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. To schedule healing, you can just inbox me and we go from there. Um, okay. So when I did the scan, this is what I felt. In the back of your head, I felt a lot of tension. Lots of tension back mm -hmm. there. That's usually a sign of depression. So either you're dealing with depression or you have been depressed for a long time, which is it? Yeah. You're dealing with depression? Um, depression? Yes. Okay. Dealing with it without trying to take the medication. Gotcha. All right. So that's the first thing I felt when the scan started, y'all. It's right in the back of the head. I felt all that tension. That's, again, so when you're yes. talking about forwards. I see comments. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to relax now, right? <laughs> and so, okay, um, good. I'm sorry. Now, also, did you feel something in your lower stomach, like in the very bottom of your stomach? 
like um underneath the belly button, like down there. Yes, it's like a charge. You did? Okay. It's like so a charge. When I felt that when I felt that when it got to that part, usually that's a sign of trauma, some type of uh trauma. Sometimes you can't tell what the trauma is, you just feel that it's there. And usually that is the source of the depression. Like it could be something okay. that you went through now that you may think, okay, well that put me in depression, but it really could be something from a long time ago that triggered it. Okay. And and something recent triggered it. And then that, that triggering is what puts you back into depression. But the source of the, the problem is down there in the bottom of the stomach. Okay. Yes. So when we so when we pull the cords, we um pull the source then we can pull the depression because if we pull the depression and not the source, then the depression comes back. It just takes one more thing to trigger it and then it comes right back, right? So we want to pull what sure. what um what the source of the uh problem is. So when I when I do this, so I'm gonna imagine myself down in that area and I'm gonna start pulling okay. it out. So you tell them what you feel as I do this, right? So again, y'all, this is using the third eye, this is using the mind. I've already connected to her, so I'm already in her. So now I just have to imagine me standing in front of her and pulling these cords out, okay? So I'm gonna start at the lower, at the sacral. This is where the cords are, the sacral chakra. This is where they're sitting. It's where most trauma, most pain trauma sits, okay? So I'm, now I'm grabbing the cord, pulling it. And you hear the static, so you that means we're working. What are you feeling? <laughs> There's something going up. <laughs> In your stomach? It's tightening. It's tightening? Yeah. So I'm pulling it's the cord tight. out and it looks... I feel, it looks I feel. big, like uh, in my your third eye is how you see, right? And I'm not always good at seeing uh, chords like my homie Ashley can. She can see chords like amazing. So for me, it's more about feel. But for this one, I I'm seeing that it's a big, thick cord. It's not even like the small ones it's that I can just huge. grab and pull out. I'm feeling like I'm seeing like it's a pretty thick one. So it may you may feel like it's coming from like this area. Like that. It's 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 from the it's like from the front back as if yeah. you could yeah it's almost like giving birth but going up basically right so I'm pulling all feels. of that out we're gonna keep pulling that out until it's out and sometimes these can hurt when they come out I had one done yesterday and I felt like she pulled a whole nother body out of me <laughs> sometimes they can hurt you know. Um, but we try to do them oh, slow enough to uh, pull it out without hurting, you know, the person. We try. Okay. How's that feeling? Feeling a bit better now? Okay. So this is, again, this is the trauma. Now, sometimes when we pull a trauma out of a person. Oh. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's in my throat. Yeah. So, like it's. Imagine that cord was in there, but it was so big, it's it had to find its way to kind of snake inside. So as I'm pulling down here, wherever it's at, it's, it's like this, like yeah. it's re, it's 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 decreasing uh -huh. in size. Uh huh. So it's getting slimmer and finding its way out. You know, like it's coming up, like it's lining you know, up straight. Too. Gotcha. Yes, I need that as well. Yes, I yeah. feel this. Like I wish somebody could see. Uh huh. Like if they had well, some of them gifted. Some like of them are gifted. They they can see it. I'm sure Ashley can. She could probably see it. I don't know. She probably can see it. She's not connected, I but I know really she connected. she's strong enough to usually see things. Usually can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> got to a part that got kind of almost hurt me a little bit here. Okay, now another thing I like to do when I'm pulling something out of uh, a certain chakra area, for instance, like this cord, sometimes I'll open and balance that chakra too, and that'll help as well. So this is what I'm gonna do. Now I'm going to open and balance that chakra, that sacral chakra, okay? And again, you tell them what you feel. Okay.
Y'all hear the static? That means it's real working. The energy is going back and forth. What's that? It's easing. It's easing. Like it's, it's, it's like a mm -hmm. whirlwind. Like it's like a whirlwind. Breath just right? moved it. I'm glad you said yeah. whirlwind. So for those who don't know, chakras spin clockwise. They spin. They spin. So um, when we open and balance them, we they're actually moving. So when, when I do this sometimes, some people will say, I feel like it's a whirlwind. I, I've actually heard that quite a few times. And that's why you feel that whirlwind because that chakra is actually starting to spin. When they're blocked, sometimes they can just be closed. Sometimes they can be just stop moving, right? So now that we're open and balancing them, we're getting to the spin right. So that's why you feel that whirlwind effect that you mentioned. So I'm glad you mentioned that because okay. it, it gave me a chance to um, explain that. So your, your chakras, they, they all spin clockwise. And then you have the seven main ones. And you have all these little chakras that spin all over your body. Okay. It's really thin. It's really thin now that um, that trauma that you're removing. Mm -hmm. Since this whirlwind is getting bigger, it's thinning out on the left side, like trying to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Because again, it's in that chakra. And I feel a lot of calm uh -huh. and peace right now. Yeah. So. Good. Because we're pulling out that. And so as the, the chakra starts to spin, it's actually starting to clean itself out as well starting to clean out junk. Okay. So that core being junk, and when we already pull most of it out, it's going to just push the rest of it out. You see? And that's that's why uh, chakra balancing is important. Um, okay. He mentioned your heart chakra a couple of times. Tanji, um, the nauseous feeling, sometimes when, when cords are pulled, because you may be tapping into her like unknowingly, uh, it can make a person nauseous. So maybe you maybe tapped in and, and, and I'm pulling your cores too, maybe unintentionally. <laughs> so that, but that is normal to get nauseous when cores are being pulled from the stomach. Um, maybe her nauseous feeling is that, that part I feel in my throat. Yeah. It could once be you that. get nauseous, your throat yeah. starts to feel yeah. like as if you want to vomit. Well, yeah. So I don't feel yeah. the nauseous part that but once you, feel you started that. pulling. So Tanji, maybe you're, um, maybe you're an empath and you're picking up on her feelings as well. So you can turn yourself off. You can tell yourself to turn off so you don't feel her pain. Okay. Only person should really be feeling her pain is me because I'm connected. Everybody else, turn yourself off. Don't tap in. Okay. Or you're going to feel it. So, okay. So now I'm going to open and balance your heart chakra. Okay. And you let everyone know what you're feeling as it happens. Okay. It was like a breath. Mm -hmm. It's like it's slowly like clearing my lungs. <laughs> yep. Like because the lungs just... is part of the heart chakra. And so a lot of people will say, I can breathe all of a sudden. So that means if your lungs yes. were sort of closed, you know? Yes. They, it'll it's open like it, open it wide open, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My friend is sitting here and she said, oh my God, I'm feeling everything he's saying. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. So y'all are it's seeing like live how we do this. You know, yeah. this is how we. And, and where do, and where do you live, by the way? I am in Minnesota. So she's in, in the cold state of Minnesota. Okay. I'm in White Bear no, Lake, Minnesota. No, I'm so I'm like what? way up north, where it can be 80 degrees today and it will snow tomorrow. Gotcha. So she's in Minnesota, and I'm down here in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> oh okay. wow! So as y'all yes. can see. From a it's distance, real. from a it's distance, there is no I distance in um, spirituality. There's no distance. We can touch you anywhere. As long as you're open to be receiving, we can do it. Yeah, she says, so happy to see her smiling. <laughs> yeah, you wasn't smiling like that when you connected. So. Hi, but hello, now, queen. How you? <laughs> your face is like, you're smiling like ear to ear now. Okay. And the, yeah, um, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> now, I'm going to do another thing for you. I'm going to open up the third eye and crown because I want you to see what that feels like and explain it, okay? Okay. Okay. Ooh. 
What you feeling? Sometimes it's just best to just bask in this feeling. Oh. <laughs> it's like almost. Gotcha. <laughs> What you what you're feeling right now? Um, it's a little bit brighter. You feeling the hair pressure? I have a little bit more patience. Um, I feel a relief of pressure. Oh, okay. Usually, some people will feel hair pressure in their head. When I do the third eye and uh, crown, but I think maybe because you got that depression That's sitting back you there. No pressure. Oh, right here. However, okay. Yeah, I feel pressure, but because of I don't know. Good. Something's all of this yeah. stuff is you working. Okay. You should have definitely yeah, felt it in your third eye. Um, your crown was jacked up, of course, because of the depression. But my eyes. But your eyes, like right here, that's your yeah. Your third eye goes straight back to that. So that's probably why you felt it there, because your third eye from here goes straight back, and sits right in the middle of the brain, right underneath the middle of the brain. So that would make okay. sense. You felt it there too, because I did a third eye and the crown. Okay, good. Pressure in here. So I look like some other folks on here um, getting some uh, treatment too. They kind of yeah. piggybacking off of your healing. I'm, I'm being straight <laughs> back. It's like I can feel it through the my nerves in my eyes, straight back. Emperor said, did I hear the voices in the static? Actually, yes, I did. I did hear the static. I did hear the voices in the static. I wasn't going to address it. I'm just going to leave it be. But yes, I did. Uh, I did hear those voices. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, don't leave because everybody else getting on it too. My friend, she's sitting here like, oh my goodness, I heard the voices too. I wasn't even knowing that I wasn't being nosy, but still, I'm finna go. I'm like, no, don't leave. Um, I, I also do, um, also do soul crossing. So sometimes there may be some souls just kind of around waiting on me to help them cross over. That's all. So, this is really. I want to thank you for coming on and. uh I, doing this uh, demonstration. Okay. I just wanted to show everybody why they don't have to be skeptical. You know, it can happen. It is real. It's not um, something that, um, and now they can tell the difference too between the real and the fake too. You know. That's right. So she's in Minnesota. This is real. I, I, wanna, I needed this. Yeah. I appreciate it. This is now, this now, farmer. Imagine, so imagine, imagine if I did your entire body. Fix and we go through every problem and everything, just fixing stuff. So, you know, you just got like a yeah. little taste of it. But usually, I do a full uh, uh, alignment. So, yeah. I think what you did, um, not just what I think, I also felt something as far as when I said with my right foot, I um, broke all four metatarsals across my foot back in October eighth mm -hmm. of last year. However. I was doing like some meditation and stuff like that and started, I guess, doing my own physical therapy. Right. And I wonder if that's why that's where I first felt it when you first started speaking about healing and tapping in. Mm hmm. Because I also some of that tapping in as well. So I felt it there and then I felt the cooling effect, which was probably yeah. the acceptance. Yeah. Or we yeah. connected with one another. So yeah. I do appreciate that. No problem. I thank, thank you again you. for uh, coming so on here and, uh, you know, putting yourself out here to show just you know so we can show how this is done. And then of course, uh, if okay. you ever want to schedule a full session, uh, we can do that. Okay. I already follow you, so I'll definitely be in touch. All right, sounds good. Thank Definitely you. Love, peace, God. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so looks like some of y'all also, especially your empaths out there, you. Um, uh, hold on one second, y'all. Oh, she's Claire Audience too. Yeah, uh, she probably is. What kind of what kind of cancer are you dealing with, Mary? Type in the comments and tell me what type of cancer are you dealing with. I have worked on cancer patients. I worked on HIV, um, and got pretty good results. Healed her daughter who said by a car. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember when she got hit. She was in the hospital. Did some healing work on her daughter while she was in the hospital. Yes, that was a good experience. Yes, this is great. You know, this is the first time I've ever um, showed other people how I do this, how we do this. Because a lot of people, when they write me, they like, you know, I just don't know if it works. Nobody wants to spend their money on something. They don't know that if it works. 
And so um, I'm like, man, I keep trying to explain it, but I don't, you know, it's, maybe it's not coming off correctly. So I said, well, maybe if I show them, um, then we can go from there. And, you know, just for, you know, the other healers out there, you know, you can use other tools. Again, I like to use the whole injection effect. Somebody might have pain so bad, right? At the time I may put numbing medication. So I might say, this is lidocaine injection and boom, stick it in the knee and then the knee pain goes away. Um, you can use a pendulum. You can use a pendulum and hold it over that area. Like if, if it's a, a large body part, you can use the book again as a voodoo effect. And then when you say, when I say, um, let's do healing on the entire back. And then the pendulum will automatically start spinning clockwise. And then healing will start happening in that person's entire back. So you can do it local, localized uh, area, or you can do an entire area because you're using a book versus them. And then when the healing is done, the pendulum will stop. When that session is done, it'll stop automatically. And the energy is strong. Like at the end, if you notice, when it started to stop, it actually started pulling my hand as it was stopping. So that's how we do our, um, again, our distance healing. Uh, Ashley taught me how to do, uh, use the elements. So sometimes maybe something needs ice on it. So again, using the third eye, using your imagination, using your vision, we can, we can put ice on it. We can put heat on it. We can blow wind. We can uh, put, the, put them in the earth, like on Black Panther. <laughs> we can do all type of things if we use our imagination when we do healing. You know, that's the only thing that limits us. You know, um, Moonstone, the difference between uh, this is that this is not necessarily Reiki. So you have Reiki and then you have spiritual healing. And spiritual healing are, are, are for people who are gifted as a, as a healer. People whose hands get hot when they get around somebody who needs healing. Their hands tingle. Um, so people who, when they hug somebody, they can relieve their pain. When they touch the spot on their body, they can relieve their pain. Similar to Reiki, but not quite. Okay, Spiritual healers is actually pushing out a bunch of energy, I mean, from the universe. Reiki kind of channels the energy through you, but spiritual healing, you do have to be gifted by your guide, your spirit guides have to gift you with spiritual healing. So you have different spiritual healers. You have ones that are um, empath mental healers, meaning that there are people who can sit and talk to somebody and say, hey, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And then they say, well, you know, I just need somebody to talk to. And then that, that mental healer knows how to have the right word. They just always have the right word to say that that person feels better. And that's because the spirit guides that's with them is imparting the words into them that's helping them, uh, you know, let that person know what they need to hear so they can feel better. And then you have the physical healers, the ones who we touch or we do at distance to actually do physical healing on people. Um, you have the ones who do uh, emotional healing. Sometimes people don't even need somebody to say something. They just want somebody to listen and they're empath. And so because they're empath, they know how to just suck in that energy and then if you're an empath, you always make sure you filter that energy to the to the earth. So, and if you don't do that, you know, you're going to take on that person's problems. Oh, let me disconnect from over. Hold on. Okay. And I'm still connected to her. I do that a lot. I forget to disconnect. And so if you don't um, filter that energy to the ground, to the earth, then you're going to take on those problems. So one of the things I always do as an empath is you imagine your feet being in the ground, like rooted to the ground, to the earth. And then as you take in their bad energy, it filters to the ground, it gets converted to love and light energy, and then filter back up into the universe, and then back inside of you. So it's like you're recycling the energy. You're taking bad energy and you're converting it to good energy. Because energy doesn't die, it just transfers. So you're just converting that energy. So if you're empath and you're the type of person who every time you turn around, you're just feeling everybody's emotions and that's why you don't want to be around them, then learn uh, to you know, start grounding yourself. Imagine your feet in the ground like roots. Um, and then that way when the energy comes into you, the earth can pull it out and then you can you know, push that, their energy in. And then in your mind, visualize good energy coming into your crown and filling your entire body up with that good energy. 
And if you do that, that'll help you um, not take on those effects as an empath. Now, another thing that empaths can do, even though this is not, well, it's kind of about healing too. So um, empaths can hold two crystals in their hand and you can imagine the energy from the crystals going up each arm until the energy gets to the third eye. And then once you feel that energy hit your third eye, then you can just let go and relax. And then your, your body will take over and it will push all the bad energy out of your body. And you'll feel it going all the way down until it gets to your feet. And it'll push all the way out the bottom of your feet to the earth. So that's another good um, thing I like to do when I need to get rid of uh, residual energy from doing so many readings and healings. I need to kind of cleanse myself of that energy. I like to hold the two crystals, boom, all the way up to the third eye. Once I feel it, then I just let go and just relax my body and let my body take over and do the rest of the work. Okay, so that's some things you can do uh, to help yourself. Now, let me scroll back. Uh, I'm sure I missed some comments. Did Mary ever say what type of cancer she had? Okay. Something went to her bones. Went to my bones and now it's in my liver. Okay. Um Mary, send me an inbox and I'm I'm gonna help you out, okay? Yeah. Trying to say she's gifted. I believe that. Always sucking people energy as an impact. I try not to I always call my energy back. Okay, good. Yeah, that's if that works. And that's way it's different ways, you know, you can do it. But yeah, if that works, shoot, do it. You get tired from it. And yes, that's why you have to ground yourself so you don't get tired from it. That's why you have to imagine yourself uh connected to the earth. Because you will be drained. Yes, Labradorite, that's my favorite. Labradorite is my favorite. I love this crystal. My baby right here. Before I do a reading, I always like to hold it in my hand and just suck in that energy from it before I do a reading. I love Labradorite. So, um, again, being skeptical, understood, very fair. Because there's a lot of people that are frauds out there. I mean, it is it is what it is. I do have to go behind people sometime and do work. And sometimes I have to call in friends of mine to help me out. Um, what else? I forgot what else I was supposed to be talking about. I said it. And I said it. All right. So anybody got any questions? Go ahead. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, type them below. And then we'll go. We'll go from there, answer your questions. Why do I feel my energy being sucked out of me when people touch me? Um, one of the, well, and, and not to sound messed up, but it, it's pretty much you because you're allowing it. And you're probably unintentionally, unintentionally allowing it, but that's pretty much what it is. You know, you have to keep your portal so closed that while they're closed, um, you know, if somebody touch you, you have to visually like keep your energy like you hold on to it you know because you know remember you're in control of your own spirit and body and your own energy so just because they touch they should not be able to suck unless you allow them so just like put your guard up as far as that goes and and even if you need to talk to yourself and tell your higher self do not allow anybody to take my energy without my permission you know sometimes you have to set those boundaries and then your higher self will react to that so then when somebody do touch they won't be able to get anything because as long as you haven't set those intentions, then you're kind of wide open as far as that goes. I hope that makes sense uh, to you. Somebody's trying to come on. Um, can you tell me why you're trying to come on live with me? Uh, Mark, I think that is. Because I don't want to just like bring random people on um, without knowing. But I hope that, did that answer your question. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your first name, bro. So that's why I just call you Moonstone. Okay, anyone anyone else got any questions? Want to um, ask? It can be about the healings that we're talking about, the healing work. 
And, and again, you don't have to use, uh, you know, a book if you're a healer. You know, you can use an actual voodoo doll. You can use a piece of paper. You can use whatever. What crystal can I use to work further on my creativity? Usually, I think a blue stone. Like, um, ah, uh, shoot. It's in my head now. I can't even get it out. Blue lace agate. Yeah, blue stone. It says, how do I stop burning all my light bulbs out in the house I enter? Hmm. Burning my light bulbs. Usually when I have that problem, it's usually because there's some things running around. So you might have some stuff attached to you. You might need a cleanser. You might got some stuff attached to you. Yeah, I got some stuff attached to you. Um, uh, cheap chick. Why do empaths spend, experience so much anxiety? Typically because um, they're wide open again. You know, portals, we call them portals wide open. So you think um, about your aura, your energy field. Everybody has one. And I always imagine a door on mine, right? A locked door, a door with a deadbolt. I'm the only one that can open it and close it, you know, or get permission for... for Somebody else open and close it. And because I'm empath as well, both physical and emotional, I keep that door closed and locked. And it doesn't open unless I open it. So if I don't want to connect to somebody, I don't connect. Um, and so as empaths, empaths have to learn to imagine that energy field around them. Close the door, lock the door, and put the key in your pocket. And set the intentions. Whether you have to say it out loud to yourself, you just... You just say it, you know, no one opens this door without my permission. And then you say whatever at the end that seals the deal, whether it's amen, whether it's ashe, whether it's namaste, whatever words you use to, when I say this, this goes into effect. For me, it's ashe. So if I say, I want my door closed, lock it. Nobody opens this door unless I say so, ashe. When I say that, boom, I feel that energy. And my spirit guides, everybody, higher self knows he wants his door closed. So that's what empaths can do to um, keep themselves from uh, being open so much and getting drained and getting anxiety because you're picking up on everybody else's um, energy. How can I get a curse removed from my Nigeria ex? Well, I do remove curses. Um, you know, we do them privately. And uh, with the curse removals, um, not only do I remove the curse, but then I also remove any negative entities or energies associated with it. If it's from your Nigerian ex, then we also cut all the cords between you and him. So there's no more connection to him to you. Um, so we do core cutting, cleansing, and we remove the uh, curse. Uh, and we do it, I do it in an order so that it's, uh, it comes off and it doesn't come back. Okay. Um, but I do do those. Good morning. Guess it is morning. Huh? How does the mental process add to anxiety? It's a good question. Um, our minds play a tr play tricks on us all the time. A lot of times, there's uh, you know, again, you in control of your own energy, your higher self. You're in control of you. So if you don't control it, then it's allowed to just run free. Now, it doesn't mean that even if you try to control it, it still won't get the best of you sometimes. Because that happens. But usually it's our own mind who, who sometimes we create things in our mind that don't exist. You know, movies, if you will. We create movies in our heads that don't exist. And then when we create these movies, then we create anxiety because we, in our mind, it already happened, even though, even though it didn't happen. And a lot of times that's what happens with us. We, we uh, create things that's not real, it's not true. We allow our mind to just run free. Can you do a healing on me? Uh, yeah, um, I do charge. They're not free, just so y'all know. Curse removers are 50, probably cheaper than most. Um, those uh, chakra alignments healings are 40. And as y'all can see, when he's doing a live video with, with old girl, it takes energy. It's not, um, even though I might sound like I'm just sitting here, you know, it's a lot of energy. I'm sweating already just from doing that. You know, the energy goes through and it's hot when it goes through your body. That energy is hot. 
Okay, Tanja says she's gonna schedule a healing. Come get this come get this work. There are people that can flicker lights and blow out light bulbs. Yeah. I think I'm one of them because I've been blowing out light bulbs all over this house. My throat hurt since a few weeks. What happened a few weeks ago? You just don't know? Just up the blue? I'm going to ask you what's going on. Might be a gland, could be a gland. Just look that up. Sliders. Sliders? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Cool. Wicked best. What's going on? Anybody else got any questions? Um, yeah, healing energy is hot. That's another uh, sign of a healer, of a spiritual healer, a gifted healer. When you heal others, you get hot. Because that shit just, it be coming through you fast. So, like, sometimes I do, like, regular sessions on people. Like, I've had to, like, make sure I'm cool because halfway through, the whole body just feels like you just want to break into a sweat. I don't want to be dripping sweat on nobody. But, again, using the elements, you can cool yourself off. I can cool down, warm up, you know. So, I just want to see if anybody else have any questions. No questions? No more questions? Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to thank everybody for coming on tonight. Um, I know it's kind of late, so a lot of people won't probably catch this until the morning. Um, if anybody have any questions, uh, you can continue to leave them here. And then when I go back to the comments, I'll uh, start to answer them. What can I use to cleanse the energy in my home? Uh, white sage usually works really good. Uh, open the windows, open a few windows, and uh, sage your home. Command any uh, entities that are in there out of the home. And then if it's some really dark energy, uh, then a lot of times when I do a cleansing, I, um, you know, connect to that person again, go inside the home, look around, see what's there. And then if there's something, there's some really bad stuff in there, then I, I, I would schedule a cleansing go in there and uh, snatch these things out and get rid of them. Um, because some of them are dangerous. They can, uh, yeah, some of them just laugh at your sage. So it just depends on what's in there. So try sage first. And while you're sage, you command them to leave. You command all of them to uh, leave your home. Okay? So sage. Oh, you're welcome. Raina? I think it's Raina. Hope I pronounced your name right. Um, you're very welcome. Thank y'all again for watching. And I'll be back on here soon, um, most likely Sunday. So peace, love, and light to everybody. Y'all have a good night or a good morning. I'll talk to y'all soon. Ashe.